Okay. Welcome back. I, what I would like to talk about um, is uh, query design. Query design. Query design is um, crucial when conducting um, what we call search as research. So how do you formulate a query uh, which is in fact a research question or an input um, into a research question? So this is a different way to use a search engine. So we're not using the search engine as a consumer information appliance. Uh, we're not looking up where to get pizza um, nearby, which is, uh, which is, which is the, one of the major um, sort of user scenarios for, for Google and, 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 and uh, for a location where a service is being turned on and, and, and Google Instant and, and Google Voice Recognition. Okay, Google, where's the nearest pizza place? We're not using Google like that. We're using Google or trying to use Google um, as a research machine. And when using Google as a research machine, the question that you always should ask yourself, and this is a question which we've posed before, is are we researching Google, that is the medium, primarily, or are, are, are we researching the societal, uh, primarily? And, and to use Google as a research machine, what one is striving to do is to reduce the Google effects. So how do you reduce um, uh, Google effects or Google artifacts or medium effects? So this is a, a question that we also pose um, when doing query design. Okay, what I want to uh, begin with um, is um, the notion of a, of a keyword um, and what a keyword is. So when formulating a query, um, one is often querying keywords in order to find out who's using them uh, and in which contexts. Um, now, I refer to the work of Madeleine Akrish, uh, Bruno Latour, uh, and others who uh, discussed um, uh, the idea that keywords, um, far from being generic, or far from being just used uh, universally, actually can be parts of programs or anti-programs. So that is efforts at putting forward a proposal, a campaign, a project, promoting a project, or opposing it. Uh, so keywords can be thought of as being a part of a program uh, or an anti-program. There's also a third type of keyword, and that is keywords that are um, efforts at being neutral. So efforts, specific efforts in, uh, not to join in a program or an anti-program. So what I would like to have you keep in mind is, 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 um, uh, is that we would like to have you uh, think about uh, keywords and w when formulating your queries as being parts of programs, anti-programs, or efforts at, at neutrality. Um, and when you think like that, you realize that the issue language that are, that's being used, you want to retain it. You don't, wanna, you don't want to have equivalents. You don't want to have substitutes. So there is a difference between using the term conflict minerals and using the term blood minerals. Conflict diamonds, blood diamonds. They're used by different actors for different reasons. Um, and so what you want to do is not treat them as equivalents and group them together, but you want to treat them as separate because they are parts of programs or anti-programs. And then if someone comes up with a third term um, that's a, that, that is something like um, minerals, <laughs> maybe that is an effort at being neutral. As, and not joining the group using the term blood minerals and not joining the group using the term uh, conflict minerals. Okay, so to show you that, um, what I have here um, is, is a sort of famous, two famous exchanges that took place at the White House in the US 
um, between the then President um, Bush and the then leader of um, Palestinians, um, which is um, Abbas, who's, who is currently the, the leader, at least of the you know, Fatah and the West Bank. Um, so these are, and then the exchanges that took place between Bush and the then Prime Minister of Israel, um, uh, Sharon. And these uh, will show you um, uh, the, the positioning <coughs> efforts that are being made in, uh, through the use of particular terms. And I'd like you to be aware of these when, when, doing, when formulating your queries. So the first one um, is um, uh, Bush talks to the Palestinian leader. And Bush, um, the US president, begins by discussing um, the, uh, what he calls the security fence. And this is the, the barrier between the Palestinian occupied territories and, and Israel. Um, and, and, and Bush uses the term security fence. Now, that is the official Israeli term. And Abbas replies saying, uh, well, actually, it's the separation wall. Now, that's a very different adjective, separation. So, that, so, so the, the purpose is not for security. No, it's to separate. I mean, it's a very different noun. It's not a fence, <coughs> a neighborly fence, good neighborly fence, lightweight. No, it's a wall. Um, and then the journalist steps in and says, um, barrier wall, which is obviously an effort not to, s to take sides. Um, to be, to, it's, it's an effort at neutrality. And then, and then Bush, being diplomatic, um, realizes when talking to Abbas that the word wall is being used. So then he changes <coughs> and concludes by saying the wall. Now, Four days later, the Israeli uh, prime minister comes to the same space and talks to Bush again. And he begins with um, security fence, which is a, the official Israeli term. And then a journalist steps in um, and seems to be a little bit confused because the journalist first says separation fence and then wall. So he's not using security fence. Um, sort of trying to be neutral, but also trying to ask a critical question. And then Bush concludes uh, by, again, being diplomatic uh, to both, being diplomatic to Sharon by saying just, just using the word fence and not using an adjective. So in some sense, being diplomatic as well to, uh, to a boss who visited him four days ago. Now, now th this, is, this is very, very specific stuff. Uh, and uh, th we have a program security fence, anti-program, separation wall, and efforts of being neutral, barrier wall, and et cetera. Now, you can um, analyze um, uh, media spaces with this in mind. This is one example. Now, for those of you who are really far in the back, you probably can't read it, but may maybe you still can. Um, what you see before you is a kind of network graph uh, where there are nodes, which are uh, countries, um, and, and, there's, and, then, and then there's the term that each of these countries use for it. Uh, and, and this is um, uh, debates at the UN Security Council, the first debate on the barrier. This debate took place in 2003, and I'll show you the next debate in a second that took place in 2005, uh, when this was first being constructed. Now what you see here um, is you see a variety of terminology and, and which countries use what. And if, they're, if they cluster, the, same co the, the countries are using the same term. Um, so you see, for example, expansionist wall, walled uh, Bantustans. Um, you see the racist wall. You see security wall. You see the barrier. You see the fence. Separation wall, which has the largest cluster, the wall. Um, the structure uh, and separation uh, barrier. You also see security fence, which is the official Israeli term. And security fence is only used by Israel and Germany because Germany always backs Israel in the UN Security Council after the Holocaust. Always. Or most times. Um, two years later, 
you see a sort of similar picture, uh, but this time um, Israel is alone in, in the, using the term security defense. Germany is uh, not there. Um, and um, you see still wall um, with a variety of, uh, of adjectives as, as being, um, as attracting the most states to it. Now, what this shows you uh, in some sense um, that the various countries cannot come to terms, uh, that there are a number of different programs and anti-programs. There are multiple. Um, the, it also show you, shows you, in some sense, language blocks. So, so it shows you um, alignments, if you will. So which countries align themselves to which other countries through language? And it's this sort of, uh, this, this is the alignments of actors to programs, counter programs, and or efforts at being neutral um, that one seeks to study. And that one also seeks, seeks to build into their, to, to your uh, query design. Okay, I want to now introduce two types of queries, um, and this is crucial um, for your understanding of, of formulating a query for the purposes of, of search as research. There are two types of queries. I mean, there are more than two types. If you look at the search engine literature, um, there, there are, there's talk about that there are navigational queries, transactional queries, um, and substantive queries. There are other terms for these. Um, but on a much sort of broader level, more meta level, there are two kinds, um, structured and unstructured. <coughs> um, now, the strength, the original strength of, of Google and, and the PageRank algorithm was that it was able to provide you with decent results for a quote unquote unstructured query. This was, this was the strength. Um, so an unstructured query is, is something that's open-ended, that's ambiguous, um, that's not exactly clear what you're after. Um, and the example that was often used in the early search engine literature was for the query Harvard, which could refer to the university or it could refer to businesses near the university like the Harvard sandwich shop. Um, and um, so, so PageRank, by looking at which sites received the most links from the most influential sites, would return Harvard University as the top one because it would conceivably, it would presumably receive more links from reputable sources than the Harvard sandwich shop. So if you were doing pure keyword matching, you wouldn't know which one would be on top. But since uh, you were doing uh, page rank, uh, Harvard would come out on top. Anyway, so that's an a structured query um, is a query that's unambiguous or a query which, which, is, which is very, very clear what it is that you're after. So, so here um, you see um, that from what we saw in the previous um, uh, graphs, uh, cluster maps of countries using particular terms for the, the, the barrier, um, you see very specific terms. And putting those terms in quotation marks and querying them in Google will return you sources which use those specific terms. Um, so, and if you don't use quotation marks, what Google does is helpfully provide you with equivalence. So if you don't want to make a distinction between, and you might not, between mobile phone and cell phone, which is sort of the kind of North American way of saying it, or handy, <laughs> always, when I'm in Germany, I'm like, handy. Um, then th those are all equivalents. Uh, so Google will group them. We'll, we'll give you results for all of them. Whereas if you put them in, in quotation marks, it gives you the specific ones. I, I want to just point out that these brackets, this is a particular form of annotation. We use these brackets um, to signify what the exact query is. So that's a query. We're querying a part-type wall. So the query has brackets around it, and, and, and the query is with exclamation, with uh, quotation marks. Oftentimes you'll see in literature, like if there's a query mentioned, it'll just have quotation marks, and you're wondering, hmm, 
did the query have quotation marks or are you making quotation marks in the text because it's a query? To solve that problem, we use this annotation, these, these, these brackets. Yeah? So that's how you write what the query is. If, it's, if the query doesn't have quotation marks, you drop the quotation marks, but you, of course, keep the brackets. Um, so let me just um, mention that um, uh, in order to do search as research questions, Yeah, so, 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 so that's, a good, that's a good example. So what I would like to know is, is per local domain Google, which is like per country, let's say, but we, 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 had, we define country in this particular case as local domain Google, um, uh, which, local, which, which, which sanctions are the most significant per country? So if you type in sanctions, that's as an unspecified query, you if Google is able to, if Google is able to provide, and this is the, and, and the, the point of the exercise is that we feel that it is, um, if Google is able to provide societal concern, um, the, there'll be different sanctions will be rise to the top of different local domain Googles. And, and the reason in, is indeed what you, what you said, uh, because, um, uh, and, and, it is, and it is valuable to indeed have some sort of sense of how Google is ranking. Um, and um, uh, so th we have provided a, a lot of detail about that, about uh, all their various signals. But indeed, uh, one of the more significant ones is indeed user <coughs> clicks. So, so um, if particular users in Spain uh, are probably more interested in certain sanctions than users uh, in uh, the Ivory Coast. Yeah? Um, in order to do search as research, um, there are two uh, um, preparatory steps. The first one is to install a research browser, um, which is a separate instance of Firefox, or, uh, or create a new profile, um, clean the cookies, uh, and otherwise disentangle yourself from uh, Google. Um, the second thing is, is, the second preparatory step is to understand your settings. So if you are interested <coughs> in societal concern, you want to set your geography uh, to, the, to, to, the, to the national, to the country, and not to the city, which is, which is the default setting. So those, those, those uh, two um, um, preparatory measures, setting up a separate instance of Firefox as well as uh, taking care with your settings, are, are subjects of other videos. Um, which, uh, which, have, which, which have already been uh, provided. I want to show you the results, yes? How about <coughs> if you use the uh, incognito uh, uh, tool for Google Chrome, is it, is it playing your, your cookies and stuff, or? It, it, all, those, all the private browsing and in, in, incognito tools um, do not retain the results on your own device, uh, but do retain uh, results at, uh, at, at headquarters. Yeah, no, 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 I know that, but is it, is it just instead of doing what there was in the tutorial with, with Firefox, is it the equivalent? Did no. You, did you use that? No. No, be because, uh, um, because you're, you're, still being you're, you're still being served results um, which are, in, in some sense, personalized and or customized. It's just that you're not saving your search history to your machine. Structured queries... Um, is an example. I showed you this uh, uh, before. This is um, the results of the query for um, two different terms for the same <coughs> thing. Apartheid wall, which is the official Palestinian term, uh, or has been the official Palestinian term for the barrier versus security fence. And you see you get very, very different uh, uh, results. You get a very, very different object. 
so the so the apartheid wall you see you see very wall like structure you see barbed wire you see protests you see people being you know somehow excluded whereas for security fence you you have a very very different narrative um, what you, what you see is a lightweight structure high tech um, you see the justification for the building of that wall which was a series of bomb attacks this one was in uh, Tel Aviv um, you, and you see the f you see graphics you get in, you get information <coughs> graphics um, with the number of attempts and the number of successful bombings before the wall and then after it um, so you get the argumentation behind the building it's a very very different narrative and these are the sorts of things that one is able to tease out with decent query design sometimes it's asked how do you um, uh, like remove Google's influence uh, from uh, uh, the results. So what if you're trying to study like, a Google controversy? Uh, how can you remove, uh, so how can you get away from Google and, 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 and get into all the, uh, the actors? Um, so um, <coughs> here's, a, here's a sort of a general uh, routine in order to do so, or, or a way of thinking about how to do so. That is, you, um, you want to exclude uh, Google properties, if you will, from the result. So these, these types of search operators and advanced search operators, um, there are guides for those uh, which uh, have been provided to you. Okay, this is now the unstructured um, query. Now, we did this with a group of people not so unlike yourselves. Um, we sort of took an inventory of the number of languages available in the room. Um, this was a few years ago, and it turned out that, you know, I don't know how many we had. Um, but I don't know if we had like 30 different languages that were available to us in, in, in the room. And, and we um, decided to undertake a project that, that's not so unlike the sanctions project um, for rights. We wanted to see which sort of rights um, were held near and dear to particular cultures uh, versus other cultures. Um, so in the, the local languages, uh, we formulated the query just rights. Um, um, and we did it for all the various Google, uh, local domain Google. So uh, Google. SE for Sweden, .fi for Finland, .ee for Estonia, .lv for Latvia, .co.uk for the UK, etc., etc., .lu for Lithuania, etc. Um, and we uh, manually, this is, this is then everyone's like manually, then we manually, or ed and through an editorial process, took out the first 10 unique ones that we encountered. We also saved the results page, so which some people are now smiling because you're not speaking. But then we're, we're doing we're doing research. So we save the results page, save as we saved it as HTML. We named them, you know, and and, and the name didn't start with Google because if we if, if all the one all the file names had Google, but instead started with the country domain name LV underscore. So you, so you have to think about filing your file name conventions so you can find them quickly again if you need to check them. Um, and then we visualize them. Um, um, this is the saving routine. And we visualize them as um, icons. Uh, so I each of the individual rights, each of the unique rights, we created an icon for. Now, we, would, we did this with a group of designers. We're not necessarily expected to embark on a major icon creation project. Um, but uh, so this is what it looked like. Um, so we sort of visualized uh, the rights uh, per country uh, as, a, as a kind of top 10. Um, and you see, for example, this was one of my favorite ones in Finland. The right that's held uh, quite near and dear to the Finns the is the freedom to roam. Now, this is not a trivial issue. Um, um, it, it, what it means is, is that you can walk through the backyard of someone. Whereas in other countries, 
you can't. And, and, and this, is a, this, is a, this is a big debate, of course, and I don't know if there are many British people. This is a big debate in Britain of, um, of the ability to, to run, to walk uh, the ancient pathways, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, the ones in black are the unique rights, and the ones in blue are shared across more than one country. But you see um, uh, rights types and how they are ranked per country. Um, for example, in Latvia, what's important are pension rights for non-citizens, um, etc. So in the book, you say that you um, decided not to use any uh, social science method of categorizing or putting them together. Um, why is that so? Well, just just for the for the reason that I mentioned. Uh, the outset, this idea of program, <coughs> anti-program, efforts at neutrality. So, so, so the, the language, the specificity of the language matters um, because you thereby can differentiate instead of group. Um, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's, that's, the, that's the purpose. It's for the purposes of, 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 of cultural differentiation. So when you're doing cross-cultural research, um, it, the, the specificity of the language is what you want to retain. That's the difference <coughs> between, so the program, anti-program um, uh, routine is very different, or analytical style, is different from discourse analysis. So we're not doing discourse analysis. That's, that's the point. Uh, so discourse analysis tends to group things uh, into you know, three or four large categories uh, and then draw inferences there, therefrom, whereas we like to retain the specificity of the user language, allow the actors to speak for, uh, for the purposes of, of program, I don't know if it's called programmatic, program, anti-program uh, analysis. Yeah? So um, just to conclude, uh, this, this little um, uh, skill, this little training session. So um, uh, what is important is that you indeed retain uh, the specific language uh, because it will indicate, it will show alignment. Language shows alignment, um, and and also language <coughs> might change over time. So if you're interested in an over time analysis, um, you can see um, whether or not certain actors have have left the program and joined the anti-program, if you will, uh, by changing the language that they use to describe something. So so actors have left the blood minerals and joined the conflict minerals. And so, th so, so then, then the alignments shift. Uh, uh, number two is, is, is we are striving to use the search engine as a research machine and not as a consumer information appliance. In order to do so, one must think through um, how to use an engine, and that's via using a research browser, as well as thinking carefully about your settings. Um, uh, and then the third one um, is, uh, is the query type. Um, so whereas we are, in the first instance, we're in interested in specific language, but that's a, for a structured query, specific language that aligns for a structured query, but in an unstructured query, we're interested in language that can, that can tease out differences across cultures. Also, uh, uh, different hierarchies of concerns. So using the engine with an unstructured query in order to tease out um, hierarchies of societal concerns. That's it. Um, are there further questions? Or any larger questions about the um, search engine critique? Anybody? Okay, well, um, I'm going to turn you over to uh, Eric and Esther. I wanted to just mention a couple of things, um, just so you, I mean, I, I think you've been warned, but you're, you're now entering, as of this minute, you're entering a quite an intense uh, period in the master uh, program. Um, and what, what, that, what that means is, is, um, is that it's quite a bit of work. Uh, um, this is, 
for, for a lot of previous master's degree students, it is like the best time. Uh, but in order for, uh, you won't feel that in maybe in a week or so, but later, looking back, um, but in order to actually do it well, I, I, I really um, um, would like to <coughs> impress upon you that you should start right away uh, and, and expect that certain things might not go well initially, right? <laughs> like, the, like your research design, you might think on, if you were to start this, for example, on Wednesday evening, which you won't, <laughs> but if you were to, and, 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 and then you do your research design, and, you, and then you realize uh, on like Thursday morning that the results are not the results you expected or are very workable, you're in deep trouble. So start now. <laughs> yeah, because then you can recover. <laughs> right? So if you realize that tomorrow morning, you're okay. Yeah? Okay. So that's the one warning. <laughs> and the second <laughs> warning is, um, is um, yeah, contact your friends and your boyfriend <laughs> and your girlfriend and your employers um, and uh, all the people who expect a lot of time from you and, and, <laughs> and tell them to turn it down a notch because <laughs> uh, you're going to be busy. Okay, that's it. That's it. Enjoy yourself. <laughs>